when you learn how to play a scale, I don't care if you're learning how to play, you know, a, a major scale or a pentatonic scale or whatever it might be, blue scale, whatever it is, there are techniques within there that make your soloing sound better just by taking these techniques and developing, again, to an absolute level. Now, what I'm talking about here are things like bending. Vibrato that I'm adding at the, at the end. You know, these are techniques that every guitar player needs to be able to do. I call them vocal techniques because they remind us more of a singer. When we just do stuff like this, okay, we're playing the scale, but there isn't a lot of human element in there. When you start playing and you add in stuff like that, all of a sudden it begins to sound more authentic in, in a guitar sense, right? So learning how to do proper bending, learning how to do vibrato. Another one that I really, really love is sliding. You can start end phrases. You know, there's all kinds of cool stuff like that, okay? So thinking about bends, and they're, again, they're listed on there. There's, I believe, five of them, yeah. Hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, Ben's vibrato. Learning how to manipulate those tools when you solo, and again, you don't need to think of it overwhelming. I'm not asking you to do it right now and have it done and perfect by tomorrow. What I'm saying, these are lifetime things that you think about that you practice on a daily basis to get better at them, okay? Again, in Play Guitar for Life, I talk about all these things, but it's really important for you to start thinking about developing these, okay? It's really, really cool. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, the last thing I got on there, I just, it's B, it's the, 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 at the very bottom of the last page there. If you do have your guitar, I want to give you a couple things to think about. I've talked about these before if you've watched some of my videos, but I just think if you're, if you're in that place where you're learning how to scale a little bit. Okay, so let's say you got your pentatonic, but you're not really able to make things sound very musical at this point. So now you've been introduced to these five techniques and you've probably already seen them before, but maybe you don't feel so good about it, right? Maybe you don't feel so good about your bending or your vibrato or something and you know you need to develop them further. And now you got <laughs> you got me hounding you to, to keep working on them. Well, here's two other things I want you to think about then I'll wrap this up so you all can go back to your lives. One is, is adding in what I call the ninth, the magic ninth. Now don't stress about what the ninth means, but basically what you're doing is, uh, if you were in the key of A minor pentatonic. Okay, the A is the root. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add in this new note, which is two frets or a whole step higher than the root. And I'm going to show it to you on the first two strings here, and then we can start there. So let's say you were on the first string and you're playing five and eight, which is pentatonic. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the seven. And what happens is all of a sudden this pentatonic scale, which has these large intervals or distances between the notes, for the first time you've got yourself a half step. And I love to bend them, so I'll go. And now notice how all of a sudden it sounds very melodic, right? Now the octave of this nine or this ninth, which is the seventh fret of the first string, is actually located on the fourth fret of the third string. And that's another one that I really like to play down there. So if I'm playing pentatonic, it's just very melodic sounding. So what's nice about that note is, again, once you learn it, it doesn't mean you're gonna use it all the time. It's nice to play pentatonic. And then all of a sudden you throw in this note and it changes up the sound or the color of your solo, right? That's one thing that people don't realize is because you have options, different scales or whatever you might be thinking in your head, doesn't mean you always want, more isn't always better. Sometimes when you leave things out and then you inject them into the solo or into the melody that you're creating, 
it colors things up and it, it elevates it. So the listener goes, oh, that was really cool. Where when you use it all the time, the listener gets used to it. And then all of a sudden it doesn't sound as colorful anymore. Okay. So that's a really nice thing to be able to do is think about. So if I was playing more pentatonic, and then I throw that note in, all of a sudden it sounds really nice. Okay. And then again, the last thing, and I'm going to let you get out of here is using what I call the minor uh, to major twist, which is really a bluesy thing, but it sounds really, really cool if you've never done it before. Again, we're going to look at minor pentatonic. Okay. So let's say we're on the A on the seventh fret of the fourth string. Okay. And we'd normally go to the third fret or excuse me, the fifth fret of the third string which we are going to go to, but here's what we're going to do is once we get there, we're going to do a hammer on from five to six. So that six is a new note for us. Okay. Now, technically what you're doing is you're playing the minor third of the same minor chord. And again, if you don't know what a minor third is, don't stress about it. It's just, you're playing this note of the minor chord. If we want to make that chord major, we'd put our middle finger down. That's what we call a major third. We're using both the minor third and the major third. And we're doing it as a hammer on from the minor to the major. So it sounds like this. And the way to make it most effective from a rock and roll blues kind of standpoint is to move from the, the lower note to the higher note. When you move from the higher note to the lower note, it just begins to sound a bit more exotic, which is cool, but it, it won't work as well for a blues rock situation where if you use it as that hammer on and notice when I do it, I'm skipping the seven. I'm just playing the five and the six. And if I come back down, I'll play the seven, but then I'll play five, six and leave. Okay. So there's just a ton of really great things you can do. This is what we call phrasing is learning how to do little twists to things to give you a particular kind of sound. Because if you're just offered all of these notes, hey, here's a chromatic scale and here's all the frets and it's too much. Like we have to learn how to twist things together to make them sound a certain way. And then you have to practice them on a daily basis to make them useful to you. Okay. Some things you learn, you'll use some things you won't. That's okay. Nobody absorbs everything that we learn. We take the stuff that is most practical for us. And then we put the other stuff on the, on, on the sides, you know, just, just for now, Maybe we throw it away. Maybe we just put it on the side for now and we'll come back to it later, but we find these real practical things that we need.